Welcome to the latest series of ECHO. ECHO is an international, inspiring and informative webinar series by Global University Systems that brings to you some of the most interesting businesses and business leaders from across the globe. Our topic today is Behind the Mic, and we're joined by Raj Badan, CEO of Leica Media. Leica Media is home to multiple UK-based Asian radio, radio channels, including Leica Radio, Leica Gold, and Time 107.5 FM. Since joining Leica Media in 2021, Raj has overseen the strategic and management operations of these stations and bring with him over 20 years of industry experience along with him. Raj joins us today to give first hand insights into um, today's broadcasting world. And we'll also talk about his role as a CEO and the steps he has taken to get there. Uh, hello Raj, thank you for joining us today. Hi Jackson, thank you very much. Good Thanks very much for the introduction. Thank you. Uh, Raj, um, we had this tradition at ECHO where we talk about one of the gust values um, right before we start the webinar. Um, and with like a media, like a radio, the best thing that matches to it is communications. Yeah. So I would like to tease out that value and hear what your thoughts on communications. What does communication mean to Leica Media? Uh, first of all, um, communication is everything for Leica, um, not just for Leica Media, but also for the Leica Group, because a lot of people will know that um, the, the Leica Group is known for Leica Mobile, which is uh, telecommunications, and that is our flagship brand, for, uh, the flagship company under the Leica Group. And then, yes, we have got Leica like Media, and we run three radio stations, which you just mentioned, uh, Leica like Radio, Leica like Gold, like uh, uh, we've got Time FM, Time 107.5, and we've also got a Tamil radio station, which we keep separate. It's called Artiban Radio. However, um, communication these days, it's all about communication, whether you're going to be talking to someone, whether you're going to be saying something on social media, whether there's going to be some kind of expressive without any kind of talk. Um, it's all about communication these days, and I think that goes a long way, and that, that is the kind of essence for the Leica group. Thank you, Raj. To our viewers, do send questions for Raj in the chat box, and we'll come back to you during the Q&A session. Raj, let's dive straight in. So as a media professional with over 20 years of experience, yeah. um, we're very keen to hear about your career journey. Do give us an insight. Um, so, so, so I think um, what happened was when I finished university back in 2003, I, was, I had that kind of hunger and that passion to, to you know, get straight into what I, what I did, which was media and communication and media law um, and I dived straight in um, and, I, and I 2005 was a pinnacle year for me not only because I joined a radio station in Leicester called Sabras Radio which is one of the the biggest commercial Asian radio stations in the Midlands but also in 2005 I set up um, a website a media and entertainment website called bizasialive.com um, that all kind of stemmed in 2005 and, and then following that 2008 is when I left Sabras three years later because I got a job opportunity here in London. So I was running a radio session called Z Radio, which is part of ZTV. Um, so I was running that radio session for about two years, but it was during the recession period. So it wasn't um, 100% in terms of, um, you know, it wasn't very safe at that time uh, because of the commercial um, uh, the impacts. So I was there for two years. Then I went back to Sabras, um, which is uh, a role that I was given, uh, which was a director position at Sabras. I stayed there till 2020, uh, joined Leica mm -hmm. in 2021, January last year. So yeah, 14 years at Sabras, uh, I've been at Leica now for 18 months, so it's been pretty non-stop. Amazing. Um, so you're a definition of a media all-rounder, basically, mm -hmm. from what I can understand. Uh, and you're also the co-founder, you've already mentioned BizAsialife.com. That's right. Um, so you're the co-founder of UK's only Asia media and entertainment site, BizAsialife.com. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about how you came about this and your role today? Biz yeah, so, so BizAsialife.com, uh, again, uh, back, back in 2005, what happened was um, I was looking, uh, looking around and I used to read Media Guardian a lot, the Guardian website mm -hmm. where they've got a media section. And I was very, very, you know, I used to read it on a daily basis because I used to get enthused by... Um, the, the content that they, they write about Channel 4, BBC, ITV. And I was thinking to myself, why is there not a publication for Asian media? Uh, and I wanted to launch something that was going to be B2B, um, which has now transpired to B2C. So we have got consumers also going onto the website. But it was something that um, was a brainchild of myself and also my twin brother, which is uh, Lack. Uh, I'm sure he's watching. Um, but yeah, that's something that we decided together because we wanted to make sure that there was a publication where uh, Asian um, professionals in the media sector could get first-hand information as to what is happening, what the maneuvers are, if there's anyone leaving a company, if there's anyone joining a company, if there's any jobs happening in the Asian media circuit, all that was being, and, and it's now become one of the biggest websites in the Asian media section, and there's no other website like that. Um, and in 2009 or 2010, we launched a showbiz arm to it, so we've got an entertainment, like a Bollywood segment to it, which is now kind of, you know, 
attracting a lot more consumers to the websites as well as the uh, the businesses yeah. and the corporate. We've also got a lot of the consumers going on to it. How important um, is is that there's diversity in the UK media landscape? You already mentioned diversity. Do you know what? There's there's a lot being done over the years. I think in recent years a lot more. Um, I still think that there's still not as much. Um, there's you know there, there's there's some names that you can always think about when you think about um, your Brit Asians. You think about diversity. You think about you know the Sanji Buskers, the goodness gracious me. You know or you think about the, the typical ones. Yeah. But I don't think there's anyone as such at the moment that kind of sticks out and you think oh actually. So I, I think there's still that kind of gap in the market which still needs to be filled in. Yeah. I think a lot of the uh, mainstream media, the mainstream outlets, they need to do a little bit more. That's non Asian. Um, they need to do a little bit more in terms of pushing, um, you know, uh, uh, ethnic minorities and also talent. And it shouldn't just be, we shouldn't have a, a, a tag saying ethnic minorities in the media. Yeah. We should be treated like anyone else. Yeah. Um, if your work's good enough, it should speak volumes and that's it. Uh, and I think there needs to be a lot more done on that. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned previously uh, earlier that you're keen to see involved in the whole process of like a media, like from advertising to scripting. Uh, can you give us an insight into your role and responsibilities as a CEO and what advice would you give to a student who wants to up, work their way up? So, so, so do you know what? I've got this fancy title, which is CEO. Uh, and I, as much as I love being a CEO, um, I'm, 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 I'm just like with anyone else in my team. Um, I, I, my, when I first joined Leica, I said to everyone, um, CEO is CEO, but at the end of the day, we have got the same goal. All of us together as a team, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that the radio stations are successful. They're getting the listenership, they're getting the advertising, because that's what we depend on. And thirdly, we're being spoken about the perception needs to change to make it sh to make to make the advertising easier, mm -hmm. to attract the advertisers and attract the listeners, because perception is everything, and that marketing is very important, and it's free marketing as well because perception you don't need to buy. However, um, there was there's, at that time when I joined, I said to my team, I said, let's do this together. I said. Um, yes, fine. There, sh there should be a line where we don't cross. Um, you know, you don't want to be taking the pee. Uh, but we want to make sure that we all work together to make sure we get the right results. And that's exactly what I've done. So I do a lot of things which are probably uh, on the most basic level where uh, things that I did when I first started in uh, radio, like script writing, mixing adverts on uh, Adobe Edition, um, you know, getting, ad getting songs on uh, onto the system, which is an RCS Zeta um, playout system that we use. So there's a lot of things that um, I wouldn't normally do uh, as a CEO, um, but I'm doing. And also, I'm, I'm quite interested in the sales aspect, so I love, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the best salesperson, but I do like getting, and I do love networking with a lot of the mainstream agencies. Mm -hmm. So we're talking to a lot of mainstream agencies about getting a lot of business into the radio station, and that's uh, the revenue, and that's what counts at the end of the day. Um, you mentioned you overlook programming, production, social media, marketing, so basically also sales, all these yeah. areas which you overlook. Um, what role have you had in the, in the in the brand development of Leica Media, from attracting high-profile sponsors to advertising campaigns to rebranding, uh, and could you explain to our students the importance of this process? Yeah, I think I think brand uh, and positioning is very important for any media outlet. Um, I think having clear identities is very important because um, what happened was uh, before I joined, um, and, and a lot of the viewers will probably know uh, from from previous years that when Leica. Um, bought the radio stations uh, 1458, 1035 and 107.5, the frequencies um, when, they, when they were in the market. Um, the radio stations perception wasn't brilliant because um, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of things that are happening were, you know, behind the scenes. Um, there were a lot of politics. My job was I wanted to come in. I wanted to make sure that we've got three radio stations with a complete clear identity. Um, I'm from brand awareness, I'm, I'm from that kind of marketing perspective. I was thinking, I want to make sure that when people switch on to Leica Radio, they know what to expect. So we made it into a hit Asian music station. So it's basically like a capital yeah. but with Asian music. So all you're going to hear on that are the latest tracks, mm. Bollywood tracks, Bangra tracks, mm. uh, UK Asian music that we're, we're the artists that we're pushing. So that was like a radio. With Dilse, we have a second station called Dilse Radio, which is now like a gold. Mm. So when I was listening to Dilse Radio, I was like, what is Dilse Radio? Because it's getting too mixed in terms of its messaging, its output with like a radio. Mm. There was too much of a crossover between the two stations. Mm. So I said, time to axe Dilse Radio. And then I made the move of launching like a gold. Mm. Uh, like a gold launched in September 21 in last year. And since then, it's had so much positivity in terms of response from A, advertising, and B, from the listenership. Yeah. We have um, an audience measuring body uh, in, in the industry called Rajar. 
they look at data and they look at how many um, listeners are tuning into what station. So the listenership that's come for, for Like A Gold ever since its launch is uh, the average listening hours per listener is the highest for any Asian radio station in the country. So we've done something where a radio station was not doing so well. We've taken it to another level. We've given it a new positioning um, and kind of filled a gap in the market because there's no other radio station that was targeting an older audience. There's your magics, your smooths that are targeting an older audience uh, for, uh, for non-Asian. Yeah. But then Asians that have a station that was dedicating just those tracks from say the eras gone by yeah. and we wanted to make sure we have a station for that because we've got a station like a radio for the for the new music yeah. and we wanted a station for the old so we're covering all kind of demographics that's, with that. that's great. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, you currently present the flagship drive time show at like a radio yeah. and you did, uh, did so uh, in the previous role at Sabras Radio um, and what I admire about, about radio presenters is you always know on the sp what to say on the spot like with me when I get nervous I have a complete blackout so yeah. what are your tips like how, how do, you, do you get nervous or what do you do when you get nervous I, I, th I think it's good to, I think it's good to not be overconfident um, mm -hmm. I, what I do is I, I do get butterflies yeah. uh, when I do my first link mm -hmm. um, as soon as I lift the fader off at 4 o'clock when I start my show I still get that butterfly yeah. uh, but I, I like that feeling because um, it, it shows that it's something that you're enjoying you're looking forward to doing something yeah. um, I, I always say to everyone I say just enjoy it because as soon as say four o'clock when my show goes on London if they listen to Asian radio they will be tuning into to my show yeah. and I've got to make sure everything that I'm doing a has got to be entertaining B has got to be my real personality yeah. and thirdly it's got to be um, authentic so in terms of news and information that we're giving yeah. it has to be make sure it's genuine so you can't make things up because um, yeah, at that time, people want to hear the latest business, sport, news. Um, so everything is very important. Yeah. So it's very, very authentic. And you got to make sure it sounds you know, reliable. Yeah. So all those kind of factors put together is what makes a successful radio show. Yeah. Um, I just think that, um, you know, if anyone did want to kind of break into radio... Um, yeah, this will be my next question. So if, sorry, I was going to say... Yes, yeah. 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 Well, you're actually leading on to the question anyway. So it's yeah. literally like, if one of our students want to become a radio presenter, what... Is there a certain skill set that you need to bring to the table as a radio presenter? Yeah, I mean, I, I, see, I think personality is the main thing. Yeah. And I always say to anyone, anyone and I still, in fact, we're, we're recruiting new presenters on the radio at the moment. And I always say to them, I said, please don't be anyone else. Don't try to be anyone else. Don't imitate anyone. Uh, yeah. Your style should be your own. Mm -hmm. When you're talking, make sure you're talking from your heart. It's got to be, make, you know, it's got to be something with lots of energy, lots of passion. Yeah. Because as soon as that fades up and they hear you and they don't like the sound, they'll switch off and go to another radio station. I said, so you, in terms of that three hour radio show, has got to make so much impact in your first link and that is very important. So that uh, is very important. Secondly, I'd say is there are um, a lot of people who think, oh, Asian radio doesn't pay well. It doesn't, it doesn't pay well. I mean, um, you know, I'm probably the first to, to say that. It's always great to use Asian radio, commercial Asian radio it is, um, unless you're working on the BBC, you get lots more money. Uh, but B commercial Asian radio uh, is great stepping stone um, mm -hmm. for you to kind of move on to other bigger things. Yeah. And secondly, it's also a good thing for as a hobby. Okay. Uh, so if you're doing, you know, if you're working during the week and you're working in the office, but you want something that's different where you can show off your personality, yeah. then I think doing a weekend show on the radio is always good. Yeah. Um, and also, I'd say I do a lot of experience shadowing uh, shadow presenter so try to make some kind of network contact with the radio stations and try to speak to them and say can I come in to watch how you do a show mm -hmm. and that also gives you a lot of knowledge as well so do a lot of voluntary work I think it's always good to do a bit of voluntary work because as soon as you're in somewhere with a radio station and you've got those contacts you don't know where those contacts are going to take you next Absolutely. Um, you refer to yourself as a motivated focused and dynamic media professional how important are these three attributes and what tip would you give to students or anybody who's watching now who would aim to kind of build these skills? Uh, so I think motivation, um, I think, comes from within your work. So anything that you do and if you've got a passion for something, mm -hmm. you do it. I mean, sometimes I'm doing endless hours. You know, it's at the end of the day, it's not always about um, how much money you're getting or how much overtime you're going to get. Um, I think that sometimes you want to grow your own self. And I always see... Um, okay, what, am I do what I'm doing now, what would I be doing in about six months' time? And do I still want to be where I am now? Or do I want to grow as, a, as an individual? What can I do yeah. to grow myself? And I would probably say, if I put in extra hours here and there, if I do something extra that's going to build my own brand, that is how I can now start moving on and start thinking about the bigger picture for next year. Yeah. Um, so I think that motivation comes from the drive, from the work that you do. And if you've got that passion, and if it's not always about 
or what I'm earning and how, um, you know, what kind of package I'm getting, then you're just going to be at a standstill and you're not going to really grow. Um, and then that also comes, I mean, everyone's got this passion to grow and everyone's got this passion about how much they're earning and how much, and that's very important. Yeah. But I don't think it's the, the kind of, the, the kind of everything. So yeah. you need to think about what else are you getting in terms of, you know, um, delivery from your work. So it's very important in that way. You've built strong industry links with media professionals, like within British Asia Media and Bollywood. How important is networking and connectivity? Oh, network is very important. Uh, I think with uh, media, um, if you don't have a good, strong network, um, it's it, it can be a bit kind of troublesome. Um, I think having um, some kind of knowledge and understanding of your 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 sector, mm -hmm. your especially your media sector, um, whether they're a rival. I mean, I've got a lot of rivals from mm -hmm. other radio stations. However, I kept it very mutual with everyone. Yeah. I think it's always a, it's a great attribute to have. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when it comes to commercial rivalry, that's a different thing. But I think building up a strong network and whether that's strong network in person or whether that's a strong network on LinkedIn or on Twitter or Facebook, or whatever it is going to be, you need to make sure you try to get those contacts because you just don't know when you're going to need these contacts. I mean, it could be someone one day that is probably just looking for someone. Um, like I always put these adverts out on my social media to say I'm looking for new presenters and the kind of response I get is just overwhelming. Um, and some of these people are just friends that are on my social media. Um, so it's not someone that I would know personally. However, because of their network with me and they, I'm in their network circle, they have now kind of got themselves kind of connected to me in that way. And if they are not interested, they'll pass the message on to someone else. Absolutely. And so it's always, that network is very important. I mean, I, I can't emphasize that enough. I think having a network, having um, uh, some kind of social kind of attribute is always important in terms of getting your name out there. You mentioned that being present on social media gives an extra chance to network and increase uh, your exposure. Now you have a very strong social media presence with over 200,000 followers collectively on social media. Uh, how has social media played a part in your career and uh, how can students make use of social media to their advantage when it comes to looking for jobs or um, even to build a portfolio? So, it's, so again, like social media is very important and I was telling you um, just off, uh, off air yeah. uh, um, how, how important social media is. I think if you don't have that social media presence, it can it could probably work against you sometimes, um, because a lot of em, you know employers like to look at the activity of a certain individual, and you know it sometimes may go against you if you're doing you know silly things on social media. But it also can work in your favour as well. Um, and there's also there's a lot of headhunters, and yeah. I know from from Leica that there's a lot of headhunters that are always looking at profiles of individuals on LinkedIn, on Instagram, to see how much activity, how much noise is being made by a certain individual and how they could benefit from that person at their company as well. So there are a lot of people out there that are always constantly looking. And I personally have got to where I am from the work that I've done on my social media platforms because you know, some might call it a show off, yeah. uh, some might call it that, you know what, this guy's very active on social media. Um, however they see it, um, it's it's helped me in terms of where I am today yeah. and I would definitely advise everyone to be very active on social media because you just don't know where it's going to take you next. Absolutely. Especially when you're passionate about it and you have your goal. Yeah. You always, I do. I mean, yeah. do you know, even, even like, like I said to you, I mean, even if I have a spare five minutes, I'd love to go on to uh, Instagram Live. I just yeah. talk to everyone that's on there. Yeah. There might be about 50 people watching, but, you know, 50 people, they've spread the word and... Yeah, and since then, and since I've been doing a lot of these kind of Facebook lives and Instagram lives, um, there's other companies, PR companies that have contacted me, you yeah. know, about brand endorsements. Yeah. Um, you know, can you come and work with, a, work with us at an event? We're doing this and that. Yeah. And it, you just don't know what doors would open. Um, so, you know, something that's just kind of quirky or a bit of, you know, you know, you're passing time yeah. on social media can turn into something that could be a dream later on. Absolutely. So many opportunities. So many, so many opportunities. Absolutely. Um, now you studied media communication. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit about your education, how it has set the platform for where you are today? Um, so I started. Um, uh, so, so I did. I did media throughout. Um, so I, I. Some people used to laugh at me, saying, "Oh, you're doing media at school. Yeah, it's not the. It's not the kind of subject that you know Asians have been kind of been told about. <laughs> oh, yes. you know, it's always it's always the typical ones. <laughs> However, um, do you know, for me, if someone tells me not to do it, I'll do it. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that. When I'm at school, I'll do my media. I've got the interest in radio. I've got the interest in TV. I want to do a bit of writing, so a bit of journalism. Yeah. And then um, 
that opened the doors to going to college. When I was at college, I stuck to media, did a BTEC. Um, I did a BTEC uh, media and communication, which was two years at Sutton College in Birmingham. And then from there, I moved to university where I did media, communication and law. Mm. And the law was very important because for me, everything you do on the radio, everything you say on, on, on in my publication on bizasialive.com has got to go through thorough checks because if you are slanderous, if you're liable, you know, if you say something that's going to be, uh, you know, that's going to be wrong or misleading, yeah. then you get done for it. So that's why it's very important. So I want you to understand the, the kind of ethics behind that. Mm -hmm. And that's now brought me where I am, which has been fantastic. And, and, and I, you know, for anyone who wants to or is studying media, mm -hmm. don't think about what others are saying. Enjoy it. Take the opportunity. Just don't know because there's so many people that are in media now that are successful and they are, you know, they're, they're probably are across national television stations or radio stations that have done so, so well. Yeah. And kind of going back to the point about social media, if you notice now also, um, the Love Island stars, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, they are getting so much kind of endorsement deals just by appearing on Love Island, yeah. but also because they were just um, Instagram stars. Yeah. Um, and this, you know, opens up so many kind of avenues. And that's what I'm saying. This is very important. So, yeah, I think just just stay focused. Don't get too distracted by certain individuals. Mm. There will be kind of some kind of haters in between, but you want to make sure you just reach that goal that you want to kind of uh, achieve, and that's it. What advice would you give to your younger self when you were at university? Um, I think at that time at university, I I, I wanted I wanted to do a bit more television. Mm. So I mean, I was saying to you before, I said I, I'm a bit <laughs> nervous doing doing this today, but. Um, I'm more of a I'm radio. Always guy. nervous. <laughs> so, 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 just, so doing uh, so doing radio is great because you know you're just talking in one room in front of a mic, but you don't know how many people are listening. Yeah. But doing this live in front of um, you know so many people, um, you know, television for me, I think I wanted a bit more. Um, yeah, I think television was one thing, um, and I, did, I mean I did everything that I wanted to do at university. I mean I, I wanted to do radio. I did radio. I did some journalism, which is good. I did law and uh, and all of it together. Um, what I'm happy today. Yeah, I'm happy where I am, yeah. And one of the burning questions that students usually have is um, at Leica Media or at BusyJLife.com, are there internship opportunities? Or if there are, and if there are opportunities, what kind of candidates do you look for? Um, so, yeah, so what, what happens is um, there's a process. So what we do is we link up with universities. Um, so when there's any students that are available, they will contact us and they will say, um, you know, have you got any, uh, any opportunities available for students? And we say, sometimes what happens is that we have voluntary, voluntary places so where we don't pay anyone. So for about a three month window, we'll say to you um, that we won't pay you, but you'll get a lot of hands-on experience on everything yep. in terms of production, programming, uh, on air, um, sales, marketing, all that kind of put together. And then after three months, we can review it or during that three months, we'll review it and say, okay, fine, you know what, you've been actually pretty good. Yeah. Then we can offer in terms of some pay work, so it might be something that's going to be um, maybe on a part-time basis, or if you're really good, um, something that's going to be full-time. Yeah. In fact, we had someone who started off as an intern and a voluntary intern. Um, she did um, a placement with us for three months, yeah. and she thoroughly enjoyed herself. And she was working in sales, and then obviously sales for any you know commercial radio station is a great thing. Yeah. And she brought some fantastic uh, brands onto the radio station. Yeah then that three months has led to her working full-time, so part-time, yeah. but now she's going to be moving to full-time work. Amazing. So it happens, yeah. and there's always windows that we open up, um, depending on what time of year it is, yeah. but we do do a lot of interns, yeah. and that will always be the case, because we're always looking for young, fresh, um, vibrant, you know, very creative individuals, um, and if you've got that some radio or be media knowledge, yeah. then it kind of goes a long way. So yeah, certainly. I'm sure our students watching will be definitely happy to hear this. Uh, let's switch gears and take a look at some of the questions we received. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, Q&A. So the first question is, would you say your competitors are nervous and how do you drive growth from here? Um, competitors are... I'm sure they're watching. But, um, <laughs> so do you know, so the thing is... Um, oh, I need to be careful how I say this. So about a year and a half when I joined uh, Leica, I had so many people telling me, oh, uh, you, you shouldn't join Leica because there's another radio station that is very popular. You know, you're going to get your fingers burnt and this and that. And I was like, you know, I, I, so I said, okay, I'll take this to my stride because I'm not the one to, um, to fall at the first hurdle when someone tells me something like that. So I took it and I think it as a challenge. 
Um, and since then, um, we've made so much noise with Life of Radio and Life of Gold. And I do want to also pay tribute to my team because where I am with the radio stations today is all thanks to my amazing team because I have got some absolutely fantastic media professionals that work with me yeah. um, in, ev in every department, programming, marketing, sales, production, um, all, all my team is fantastic uh, on air team. Yeah. They're all really good. And um, because of that reason, the radio stations have changed and the perception, which is one point that I, I spoke about earlier, mm -hmm. is very important. So we are constantly announcing things on social media. We're constantly sending out press releases. We've, t we've teamed up with a few other publications that are constantly putting out press releases about what's going on. Mm -hmm with the radio stations, because our, our numbers have gone up, our revenue's looking better. So all of this put together, of course, um, I'm not sure how they are feeling on the other side. Um, maybe you should ask that question to them. Um, <laughs> yes. But I know from, from what I've heard from the market, they certainly are feeling the pinch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What has and continues to be your motivation to keep running BizAsialive.com? I think for me is because BizAsialive.com doesn't provide um, so the content that it provides is not available anywhere else. Yeah. And I'm very particular about filling gaps in the market. Yeah. There's been a couple of websites that have launched um, during, the, you know, during the 15, 20 years that the website's been running, but they're closed because they couldn't, they couldn't get the kind of material, the exclusives that we were getting yeah. on the website. Yeah. So I think that is the driving factor for me, to run bizasialive.com as something that's unique yeah. and that everyone wants to kind of look at when it comes to Asian media news and you know kind of gossip, so yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on podcasts and how has the rise in popularity for podcasts affected the radio industry? So podcasts, podcasts are good. Um, they work hand in hand with radio, um, and we 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 have got podcasts on. Um, well, they're not podcasts. We've got listen back, and we've got some features that are available on our website and our mobile app on like a radio and like a gold. However, you know, because we had so many kind of ups and downs over the years with like a radio and there was, there was, there was all these kind of revamps going on behind the scenes, um, podcasts are put on hold. So I am going to start podcasts on like a radio and like a gold, which will be on our brand new mobile app, which launched um, a month ago. Um, so we're going to be putting a lot more on there. Yeah. Um, it is something that I'm thinking about, but it was something which I didn't want to do yet because my my take was that if I start putting a lot of content exclusively on our social media and our websites uh, and our mobile app, then people will switch off from the radio stations. And my understanding was that I want to make sure that people listen and they experience the new sound of the two radio stations, and then we could start adding these features in. So that's something for 2022. Something to look forward to? Yeah, 23 for 23, yeah. Um, how do you manage your time working as CEO of Leica Media and working on Bisasia Live? And how important is time management? Um, time management is very important. Um, so I juggle between BizAsialive.com. I'm not so involved as much as, as much as I used to be because um, we've got a separate team for BizAsia. Mm. Um, again, the team's fantastic. They do a brilliant job. Um, so I, do, I spend a lot of time with Leica. Uh, mm. It takes a lot of my, my, my day, but I do spend probably you know an hour in there just to kind of see the content, obviously, yeah. on BizAsia to make sure. Mm -hmm. But I think... Again, it's about how you want to grow as an individual. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sociable, but I'm not a very, um, like I wouldn't really go out and, you know, have, um, you know, like a, 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 I wouldn't, wouldn't get drunk. Yeah. Be careful what I say. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't get drunk, um, yeah. like on a, on, a day, on a nightly basis. So I'd rather spend that time where I'm just trying to nurture myself, um, trying to kind of give myself more knowledge, understanding about what media is about. I'd rather read about what's happening in terms of law on media, yeah. um, trying to understand what the markets are saying about you know, radio stations, about websites, and I'd rather spend that time doing that. But time management is everything, especially with radio. I mean, radio is, you know, if you're not there on time for a radio show yeah. and you're not putting in things at the times that the, the clock says on the system, yeah. then um, you'll be completely off track. Of course. So it's very important, yeah. What has been the most effective social media platform for your career? Um, I'd say, okay, I'd say, uh, I'd say Instagram. No, sorry, I'll say Twitter. Yeah. Twitter, I've got, Twitter is fantastic because Twitter, then I say, uh, then I would say Instagram. However, LinkedIn has now overtaken Instagram yeah. because there's a lot of people that have approached me uh, for work mm -hmm. on, on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And that is mainly because of my work at Leica. Mm -hmm. Um, but also when I was at Sabras, uh, there were people from 
other radio stations and media that contact me through LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So LinkedIn is fantastic on a professional level, mm -hmm. um, but in terms of growing my brand, Twitter was the one thing that changed a lot of, um, you know, as soon as I got the blue tick on Twitter, mm -hmm. that kind of changed the game. So it's Twitter, then Insta, okay. then LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Um, was there a radio presenter growing up that you aspired to become? Uh, I used to love Chris Moyles. So okay. I used to listen to Chris Moyles on Radio 1. Mm. And I used to listen to Chris Moyles and I was like, ah. I used to love his Zooey atmosphere. So he mm. used to do, um, he used to have like four or five people in the room together, just having a laugh and joke. And it was, it was very kind of light banter. So everything yeah. was very kind of casual. Um, and I liked that. And even though he's now on Radio X, he's fantastic. Um, but I don't enjoy the music so much because Radio 1 is different music to what Radio X plays and it's a lot more rock, so I don't listen to rock music. Um, but I love Chris Moores as a presenter, I think as a fantastic broadcaster. And um, he was the one person that I used to listen to day in, day out, every morning and afternoon, he started off afternoon <laughs> on Radio 1. Yeah. What tips do you have to organically grow your social media following? Um, so I'd say a lot of original content. Again, um, I'd say be yourself. Um, so I think doing things. So what happens with me is that um, I, ever since I've become a CEO and then having a CEO title, even though it's great, um, it also kind of, you know, it, it kind of stops you or kind of slows you down on certain things where as, as crazy as I am off air or if I'm not on uh, as a CEO, I'm, 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 I'm quite a quite, quite crazy kind of person. So I can't really be as that. Yeah. However, what I've done is, because um, I do a radio show on Leica, people want to see a different side to me. I saw on Instagram and my Facebook, you know, if I'm out with my, with my brothers, if I'm out with my, with my friends, I like to kind of post those pictures up. I like to do a, a, just a random Instagram live. I like to do a, you know, random Ask Raj session. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of my followers that want to ask me questions or just want to get to know the other side to me. Um, and also they want to see um, the real side because the corporate side I have, they see uh, Leica, they see me on the radio, uh, but they don't see me off air or offline. And that's the kind of, I think that's very important. I think people should have that kind of real, a feeling of real when they're following someone on Instagram. And secondly, I think when you're quite quirky, quite funny in terms of doing videos, reels, all that is very important. So I think that boosts your organic uh, growth on Instagram. And people connect with that. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. Yeah. Because even on uh, Leica's uh, social media handles, we're, we're very particular about engagement yeah. and organic growth. So that has increased big time over the last four to six months because we've just given it um, to a, uh, the handles are given to an agency now mm -hmm. and the agency is looking after our, and since they've come on board, they've changed the game for us. Yeah. Our next question is, what advice would you give to a university student who wants to support a career in the media industry? What experience should they be looking to gain? What experience? Um, first, they need to decide in the media s sector which, um, what part of media they want to kind of focus on. Mm. So if it is radio, then I think take um, um, some placement at um, a radio station. Uh, if it's TV, then TV. Um, there's, there's a cross between, you know, different sectors of uh, media. Uh, so, you know, like I've done a bit of TV before, then obviously radio, and then I've done journalism. So it's great because it all ties in. Mm because you never know where um, or what aspect of that's going to help you later on. Yeah. So it's always good to do that. But um, I think always have that focus, because when someone contacts me, say someone from a, a banking uh, background, it's no relevance, it's no relevance to me. Yeah. Um, so they'll message me and say, you know, interested. But if, it's a, if they've got a good voice, yeah. is what I'm hearing. So if they send me, um, if they send me like a CV with their, with their banking details, yes. I'm like, I'm not interested. I'd rather yeah. you send me a voice yeah. of your, like a clip of your voice, I'll listen to that and I'll give you feedback. Yeah. So again, it's all about you know getting, deciding on what area you want to focus on. Mm -hmm. Try to get some voluntary uh, placement. If you get paid at the first instance, then great. Yeah. If you, but there's a lot of events that happen as well with radio stations and you know media uh, media outlets. So it's always good to kind of jump on board and help them out, mm -hmm. even if it is voluntary. Yeah. So I mean, we're doing lots of events at the moment, and we get lots of students to help us. Yeah. Um, we don't pay them, but. For that reason, they appreciate the fact that they can put it on their CV Excellent. and take it away with them. Good work experience for them. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And you know, one thing I always look out for is that there's always a voluntary kind of segment on their CV. Yeah. And I always see to see the kind of work that they've done. Yeah. Uh, because it shows A, the passion, and B, that they're willing to do things, yeah. which is not always about the money side of things. Yeah. It's something that motivates them. Motivates them, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to get some students. And 
you know, we, we pay expenses to anyone who does uh, use their own time and they want to travel. Um, but if it's, I mean, we make things clear. I mean, we're, we're, we're very transparent. We, are, we, we say things as they are. So we tell them that this is how it's going to be. If you're happy with it, great, come on board, help us out. It'll also help you in terms of, if you want a reference from me, I'll give you a reference. So it'll always be the case. And one of our final questions, should we be vocal of our political learnings on our social media channels? Oh, uh, you've got to be very careful. No, oh, yes. I, don't, I don't think so. So I think we, we can obviously have personal opinion about mm -hmm. this. I know, I know with a lot of companies, you know, you, you have to be very diplomatic about how you voice your political opinion. Jackson, opinions. you know, I'm very, I'm very careful. Because yeah. even, even on social media, yeah. I, I don't... T I think maybe I've retweeted a couple of um, posts here and there of a, of a certain political party. Hmm. But I, I'm very particular about... Because, you know, in terms of... It can also of, get misinterpreted, right? It, it can be. Yeah. Um, but also, like, what's happening now with the upheaval yeah. Yeah. Uh, between the Tory party and yeah. what's going on. Um, you just got to be careful that if you start endorsing that, people start thinking that this is you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you don't want to be painting, up, especially when you're growing as well as, a, as an individual. Yeah. But then, however, it can also work in your favour if you're trying to get a career in politics on TV yeah. or radio. Yeah. Because they are at the radio stations like LBC, Times Radio, yeah. they're focused on a lot of politics. Yeah. So that could work in your favour. Yeah. Uh, but you need to tag the right people in as well. Yeah. But if you're just creating a for all um, without justifying what you're saying, then it could work against you. So you yeah. could be very. Uh, but I'm, 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 I very. I stay away from yeah. politics. I love politics. Yeah. Um, and I watch it. Um, I watch and follow uh, what's going on because we have to for like her. Yes. Um, but um, I'm, no, I keep it very entertainment or very corporate on my social media handles. Raj, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your expertise and insights with us. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Jackson, I've really enjoyed it. I didn't realize that. Time uh, just flew by. Yeah, yes, I did. Yes, time, time's up. I didn't like realize. <laughs> no, and you also have a show to attend to later on. I have at four o'clock. Yeah, I'm on the radio, by the way. So, be really pleased to have you. I am on the radio at four o'clock <laughs> yes. today, by the way. Like the radio. Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> to our viewers, thank you for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed this webinar, getting to hear more insights about today's broadcasting world. And just like Raj already said, tune in to Riker Radio, Riker Gold, and Time. 107.5 FM and if you want to listen to Raj check out the Drive Time show at Leica Radio and down, download the Leica Radio mobile app as well download it yeah, it's on, on all mobile devices thought I'd get that plug in <laughs> thank, thank you Jackson thank, thank, thank you so much for your time thank and you I so hope if there's, if there's any advice anyone needs if there's any questions uh, by all means I'm always available on all social media platforms or just uh, contact uh, Jackson and his team I think that'd be great thanks so much thank you Raj and for more updates about our next uh, webinar do follow us on our YouTube channel and we'll see you soon thank you and goodbye